Hare Krishna. Vanchakalpa trubyas chakrapa sindubyeva chapatitanam bhavanebio vaishnavebio namo namaha. So I want to welcome you all uh, to the uh, continued reading of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We're in the middle of prayers by the personified Vedas. We'll see that now. I have to tell you uh, that uh, uh, last week, I last couple of weeks ago, I uh, tripped in the garden and fell into a trellis. And uh, I have a, a shoulder or upper humerus bone that's uh, broken in a couple of places. So I only have uh, one hand that works <laughs> right now. The other is in a sling. <laughs> and, uh, and so you'll have to uh, bear with me a little bit on, uh, on that, uh, that front here until the thing uh, uh, heals up. You ready to go? And I can't play car tall, so I'll just uh, tap on the. Krishna, 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 Krishna. Krishna, 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 Rakshamam, Krishna, 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 Rakshamam, Krishna, 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 Rama, Raghava, Rama, Raghava, Rama, Raghava, Rakshama, Rama, Raghava, Rama, Rama, Raghava, Rakshama, Krishna, Keshava, Krishna, Keshava, Krishna, Keshava, Bahima, Krishna, Keshava, Krishna, Keshava, Krishna, Keshava, Bahima, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, De Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale, Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamaniti Namane. Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravari Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschacha De Sitarine Anchakalpa Trubyas Chakrapa Sindubye Bacha Patitanam Bhavanebio Vaishnavebio Namo Namaha. So we're picking up where we left off on Chapter 87, Prayers to the Sonified Vedas. The sentence beginning about the Mayavadi philosophers. A lot of this chapter is about Mayavadi philosophers. So we'll continue in that vein. The Mayavadi philosophers sometimes put forward the argument of the snake and the rope. 
In the dark of evening, a curled up rope is sometimes, due to ignorance, taken for a snake. But mistaking the rope for a snake does not mean that the rope or the snake is false. And therefore, this example used by the Mayavadis to illustrate the falsity of the material world is not valid. When the thing is taken as fact, but actually has no existence at all, it is called false. But if something is mistaken for something else that exists, that does not mean it is false. The Vaishnava philosophers use a very appropriate example comparing this material world to an earthen pot. When we see an earthen pot, it does not at once disappear and turn into something else. It may be temporary, but the earthen pot is taken into use for bringing water and we continue to see it as an earthen pot. Therefore, although the earthen pot is temporary and different from the original earth, we cannot say that it is false. We should therefore conclude that the earthen pot and the entire earth are both truths because one is the product of the other. We understand from the Bhagavad Gita that after the dissolution of this cosmic manifestation, the material energy enters into the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is ever existing with his varied energies. Because the material creation is an emanation from him, we cannot say that this cosmic manifestation is a product of something void. Krishna is not void. Whenever we speak of Krishna, he is present with his form, qualities, name, antaraj, and paraphernalia. Therefore, Krishna is not impersonal. The original cause of everything is neither void no, nor impersonal, but is the supreme person. Demons may say that this material creation is Anishvara without a controller or God, but such arguments ultimately cannot stand. The example given by the Mayavadi philosophers that inanimate matter, like nails and hair, come from living body, the living body, but is not very, a very sound argument. By nails, they mean fingernails. Nails and hair are undoubtedly inanimate but they come not from the animate living being, but from the inanimate material body. Similarly, the argument that the scorpion comes from cow dung, meaning that a living entity comes from matter, is also unsound. The scorpion, which comes out of the cow dung, is certainly a living entity, but the living entity does not come out of the cow dung, only the living entity's material body or the body of the scorpion comes out of the cow dung. The sparks of the living entities, as we understand from the Bhagavad Gita, are injected into material nature and then they come out. The body of the living entities, of, uh, the body of the living entity in different forms is supplied by material nature, but the living entity himself is supplied 
by the Supreme Lord. The father and mother give the body necessa necessary for the living entity under certain conditions. The living entity transmigrates from one body to another according to his different desires, which in the subtle form of intelligence, mind, and false ego accompany him from body to body. That's the subtle body. By superior arrangement, a living entity is put into the womb of a certain type of material body, and then he develops a similar body. Therefore, the spirit soul is not produced from matter. It takes on a particular type of body under superior arrangement. According to our present experience, this material world is a combination of matter and spirit. The spirit is moving the matter. The spirit soul, the living entity, and matter are different energies of the Supreme Lord. And since both the energies are products of the Supreme Eternal or the Supreme Truth, they are factual, not false. Because the living entity is part and parcel of the Supreme, he exists eternally. Therefore, for him, there cannot be any question of birth or death. So-called birth and death occur because of the material body. The Vedic version, Sarvam Kalavidam Brahma, means that since both the energies have emanated from the Supreme Brahman, everything we experience is non-different from Brahman. And Prabhupada says Vedic uh, version, he means the, the Upanishads, usually is what he's quoting. There are many arguments about the existence of this material world, but the Vaishnava philosophical conclusion is the best. The example of the earthen pot is very suitable. The form of the earthen pot may be temporary, but it has a specific purpose. The purpose of the earthen pot is to carry water from one place to another. Similarly, this material body, although temporary, has a special use. The living entity is given a chance from the beginning of the creation to evolve different kinds of material bodies according to the reserve desires he has accumulated from time immemorial. The human form of body is a special chance in which the developed form of consciousness can be utilized. Sometimes the Mayavadi philosophers push forward the argument that if this material world is true, is truth, then why are householders advised to give up their connection with this material world and take sannyas? But the Vaishnava philosophers' view of sannyas is not that because the world is false, one must therefore give up material activities. The purpose of the Vaishnava sannyasa is to utilize things as they are intended to be utilized. Srila Rupa Goswami has given transcendentalists two formulas for dealing with this material world. When a Vaishnava renounces the materialistic way of life and takes to sannyas, it is not on the conception of the falsity of the material world, 
but to devote himself fully to engaging everything in the service of the Lord. Srila Rupa Goswami, therefore, gives this formula. Quote, One should be unattached to the material world because material attachment is meaningless. The ma entire material world, the entire cosmic manifestation belongs to God, Krishna. Therefore, everything should be utilized for Krishna and the devotee should remain unattached to material things." End of the quotation. This is the purpose of Vaishnava sannyas. A materialist sticks to the world for sense gratification. But a Vaishnava sannyasi, although not accepting anything for his personal sense gratification, knows the art of utilizing everything for the service of the Lord. Srila Rupa Goswami has therefore criticized the Mayavadi sannyasis with his second formula. Because the Mayavadis do not know that everything has a utilization for the service of the Lord, they take the world to be false and falsely think they are liberated from the contamination of the material world. Since everything is an expansion of the energy of the Supreme Lord, the expansions are as real as the Supreme Lord is. That the cosmic world is only temporarily manifested does not mean that it is false or that the source of its manifestation is false. Since the source of its manifestation is truth, the manifestation is also truth, but one must know how to utilize it. The example of the earthen pot may be cited again. The earthen pot produced from the whole earth is temporary, but when used for a proper purpose, the earthen pot is not false. The Vaishnava philosophers know how to utilize the temporary construction of this material world, just as the sane man knows how to utilize the temporary construction of the earthen pot. When the earthen pot is used for a wrong purpose, that is false. Similarly, the human body or the material world, when used for sense gratification, is false. But if the human body and the material creation are used for the service of the Supreme Lord, their activities are never false. It is therefore confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that even slightly using the body and the material world for the service of the Lord can deliver a person from the gravest danger. When properly utilized, neither the superior nor inferior energies emanating from the Supreme Personality of Godhead are false. As far as fruitive activities are concerned, they are mainly based on the platform of sense gratification. Therefore, an advanced Krishna conscious person does not take to them. The result of fruitive activities can elevate one to the higher planetary system. But as it is said in the Bhagavad Gita, foolish persons, after exhausting the results of their pious activities in the heavenly kingdom, come back again to this lower planetary system and then again try to go 
to the higher planetary system. Their only profit is to take the trouble of going and coming back, just as at present many material scientists are spoiling their time by trying to go to the moon planet and again come coming back. Those who are engaged in fruitive activities are described by the Vedas personified as Andha Parampara or blind followers of the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies. Although such ceremonies are certainly mentioned in the Vedas, they are not meant for the intelligent class of men, men who are too much attached to material enjoyment are captivated by the prospect of being elevated to the higher planetary system. And so they take to such ritualistic activities. But persons who are intelligent, who have taken shelter of a bona fide spiritual master to see things as they are, do not take to fruitive activities, but engage themselves in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Persons who are not devotees take to the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies for materialistic reasons, and then they are bewildered. A vivid example, a vivid example may be given. An intelligent person possessing one million dollars in currency notes does not hold the money without using it, although he knows perfectly well that the currency notes in themselves are nothing but paper. When one has one million dollars in currency notes, he is actually holding only a huge bunch of papers. But if he utilizes it for a purpose, then he benefits. Similarly, although this material world may be false, just like the paper, it has its proper beneficial utilization. Because the currency notes, although paper, are issued by the government, they have full value. Similarly, this material world may be false or temporary, but because it is an emanation from the Supreme Lord, it has its full value. The Vaishnava philosophers acknowledge the full value of this material world and know how to utilize it properly, whereas the Mayavadi philosophers fail to do so, just as those who declare that if one rejects this material world as false, not considering the importance of this material world as a means to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead, such renunciation is, has very little value. A person who knows the intrinsic value of this material world for the service of the Lord, who is not attached to the material world, and who renounces the material world by not accepting it for sense gratification, is situated in real renunciation. This material world is an expansion of the material energy of the Lord. Therefore, it is real. It is not false, as sometimes concluded from the example of the snake and the rope. The personified Vedas continued. The cosmic manifestation, because of the flickering nature of its impermanent existence, appears to less intelligent men to be false. That's in quotation marks, that's 
The Mayavadi philosophers take advantage of the flickering nature of this cosmic manifestation to try to prove their thesis that this world is false. According to the Vedic version, before the creation, this world had no existence. And after dissolution, the world will no longer be manifested. Voidists also take advantage of this Vedic version and conclude that the cause of this material world is void. But the Vedic injunctions do not say that it is void. The Vedic injunctions define the source of creation and dissolution as yatova imani bhutani jayante. Translation in quotation marks. He from whom this cosmic manifestation has emanated and in whom, after annihilation, everything will merge. The same is explained in the Vedanta Sutra and in the first verse of the first chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam by the words, Janmadhyasya Yataha, he from whom every all things emanate. All these Vedic injunctions indicate that the cosmic manifestation is due to the supreme absolute personality of Godhead and that when it is dissolved, it merges into him. The same principle is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. The cosmic manifestation comes into existence and again dissolves and after dissolution, it merges into the existence of the Supreme Lord. The statement definitely confirms that the particular energy known as Bahir Unga Maya, or the external energy, although a flickering nature is the energy of the Supreme Lord, and as such, it cannot be false. It simply appears false. The Mayavadi philosophers conclude that because the material nature has no existence in the beginning and is non-existent after dissolution, it is false. But by the example of the earthen pots and dishes, the Vedic version is presented Although the existence of the particular byproducts of the absolute truth is temporary, the energy of the Supreme Lord is permanent. The earthen pot or water jug may be broken or transformed into another shape, such as that of a dish or bowl, but the ingredient or the material basis, namely the earth, continues to be the same. The basic principle of the cosmic manifestation is always the same, Brahman, or the absolute truth. Therefore, the Mayavadi philosopher's theory that it is false, that is the cosmic manifestation. Therefore, the Mayavadi philosopher's theory that it is false is certainly only a mental concoction that the cosmic manifestation is flickering and temporary does not mean that it is false. The definition of falsity is, quotation marks, that which never had any existence, but which exists only in name. For instance, the eggs of a horse <laughs> or the horn of a rabbit or the flower in the sky are phenomena which exist only in name. 
th these are actually Sanskrit examples, of non existent things. For instance, the eggs of a horse or the horn of a rabbit or the flower in the sky are phenomena which exist only in name. There are no horses' eggs, there is no rabbit's horn, and there are no flowers growing in the sky. There are many things which exist in name or imagination, but actually have no factual manifestation. Such things may be called false, but the Vaishnava cannot take this material world to be false simply because of its temporary nature, its manifesting and again dissolving. The personified Vedas continued by saying that the super soul and the individual soul, or Paramatma and Jivatma, cannot be equal in any circumstance, although both of them sit within the same body, like two birds sitting in the same tree. As declared in the Vedas, these two birds, although sitting as friends, are not equal. One is simply a witness. This bird is the Paramatma or super soul. And the other bird is eating the fruit of the tree. That is the Jivatma. When there is a cosmic manifestation, the jivatma, or the individual soul, appears in the creation in different forms according to his previous fruitive activities, and due to his long forgetfulness of real existence, he identifies himself with a particular form awarded to him by the laws of material nature. After assuming a material form, he is subjected to the three material modes of nature and acts accordingly to continue his existence in the material world. While he is enwrapped in such ignorance, his natural opulences become almost extinct. The opulences of the super soul or the Supreme Personality of Godhead, however, are not diminished, although he appears within this material world. He maintains all opulences and perfections in full while keeping himself apart from all the tribulations of this material world. The conditioned soul becomes enwrapped in the material world, whereas the super soul, or the supreme personality of Godhead, leaves it without being affected, just as a snake sheds his skin. The distinction between the super soul and the conditioned individual soul is that the super soul, or the supreme personality of Godhead, maintains his natural opulences, known as Shad Aishvarya, Asta Siddhi, and Asta Guni. Because of their poor fund of knowledge, the Mayavadi philosopher forgets the fact that Krishna is always full with six opulences, eight transcendental qualities, and eight kinds of perfection. The six opulences are wealth, strength, beauty, fame, knowledge, and renunciation. No one is greater than or equal to Krishna in these six opulences. The first of Krishna's eight transcendental qualities is that he is always untouched 
by the contamination of material existence. This is mentioned in the Isha Upanishad, Apapa Vidam. Just as the sun is never polluted by any contamination, the Supreme Lord is never polluted by any sinful activity. Although Krishna's actions may sometimes seem impious, he is never polluted by such actions. The second transcendental quality is that Krishna never dies. In the Bhagavad Gita fourth chapter, he informs Arjuna that both he and Arjuna had many appearances in this material world, but that he alone remembers all such activities, past, present, and future. This means that he never dies. Forgetfulness is due to death. As we die, we change our bodies and forget. Krishna, however, is never forgetful. He can remember everything that has happened in the past. Otherwise, how could he remember that he first taught the yoga system of the Bhagavad Gita to the sun god, Vivashvan? Therefore, he never dies, nor does he ever become an old man. Although Krishna was great-grandfather, a great-grandfather when he appeared on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, he did not appear like an old man. Krishna cannot be polluted by any sinful activity. Krishna never dies. Krishna never becomes old. Krishna is never subject to lamentation. Krishna is never hungry, and he is never thirsty. Whatever he desires is perfectly lawful, and whatever he decides cannot be changed by anyone. There are eight transcendental qualities of Krishna. Besides that, Krishna Excuse me, these are the eight transcendental qualities of Krishna, those that are just enumerated, wealth, strength, fame, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation. These are the eight transcendental qualities of Krishna. Besides that, Krishna is known as Yogeshwara. He has all the opulences or facilities of mystic powers, such as Anima Siddhi, the power to become smaller than the smallest. It is stated in the Brahma Samhita that Krishna has entered even within the atom. Similarly, Krishna as Garbodak Shai Vishnu is within the gigantic universe and he is lying in the causal ocean as Mahavishnu in a body so gigantic that when he exhales, millions and trillions of universes emanate from his body. This is called Mahima Siddhi. Krishna also has the perfection of Lagima. He can become the lightest. It is stated in the Bhagavad Gita that because Krishna enters within this universe and within the atoms, that all the planets are floating in the air. That is the explanation of weightlessness. Krishna has the perfection of prapti. He can get whatever he likes. Similarly, he has the facility of Ishita, controlling power. He is called the Supreme Controller, Parameshwara. In addition, Krishna can bring anyone under his influence. This is called Vashita. 
In this way, Krishna is endowed with all opulences, transcendental qualities, and mystic powers. No ordinary living being can compare to him. Therefore, the Mayavadi's theory that the super soul and the individual soul are equal is only a misconception. The conclusion is therefore that Krishna is worshipable and that all other living entities are simply his servants. This understanding is called self-realization. Any other realization of oneself beyond this relationship of eternal servitorship to Krishna is impelled by maya. It is said that the last snare of maya is her dictation to the living entity to try to become equal to the supreme personality of Godhead. The Mayavadi philosopher claims to be equal to God, but he cannot reply to the question of why he has fallen into material entanglement. If he is the supreme God, then how is it that he has been overtaken by impious activities and thereby subjected to the tribulations of the law of karma? For the Mayavadis are asked about this, they cannot properly answer. The speculation that one is equal to the Supreme Personality of Godhead is another symptom of sinful life. One cannot take to Krishna consciousness unless one is completely freed from all sinful activities. The very fact that the Mayavadi claims to be one with the Supreme Lord means that he is not yet freed from the reactions of sinful activities. Srimad Bhagavatam says that such persons are avishuddha buddhayaha, which means that because they falsely think themselves liberated, liberated, and at the same time think themselves equal with the absolute truth, their intelligence is not purified. The personified Vedas say, the personified Vedas said that if the yogis and the jnanis do not free themselves from sinful desires, then their particular process of self-realization will never be successful. Okay, we we'll stop there and pick up where we left on. <laughs> they go on for a while yet. <laughs> thank you so much for that reading and thank you all for joining us after a bit of a break. It's nice to be back and we'll open it up now for any questions or reflections you might have. If you're on Zoom or Facebook, feel free to use the chat box on either platform. And if you're on Zoom, you're welcome to unmute yourself as well. Hi, Krishna. Good day of my obeisances to you. So good Hi. to see you. Thanks to you and Shada for picking up the broadcast. I hope everything's healing. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things in here that I was I was appreciating that, um, you know, just for one example, the way that Prabhupada says certain things in a very brief and unequivocal way, like Krishna is not void. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or there are many arguments about the existence of this material world, but the Vaishnav philosophical conclusion is the best. <laughs> yeah. he, he just he leaves it to the reader to to. Uh, to pick up on his conviction and decide for themselves whether he's uh, right or not. <laughs> also, that whole section. I'm sorry, you want to start? Go ahead. No, the whole section where he's he's comparing the uh, the material world to paper money. I'd never heard that in a long time. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good example. It's very clever, huh? Yeah, I like I like that one a lot. 
I just wanted to remark that, uh, you know, the Krishna book was was Prabhupada's uh, uh, kind of introduction of, you know, of, of Krishna to to the to um, people in the in America, A and that until Prabhupada came. Everyone thought in America that Mayavadi philosophy was established standard Hinduism. I had, I, I was a graduate student in religious studies. Every single course that talked about Hinduism talked about Mayavad philosophy. <laughs> Uh, that nobody even recognized because, because you know, Swami Nikolananda had come and the Ramakrishna mission had come, and that was what they presented as Hinduism. And so a lot of times when Prabhupada is writing the, this Krishna book, and especially this, this particular section of it, he's dealing with these people who have got this idea of what Hinduism is about. You know, so so uh, it, so that was uh, that was particularly effective for for everybody uh, to understand that. As Prabhupada really went out of his way to to kind of make that really really you know solid and established and didn't you know make any nice things. And we used to have people walk into our temple in those early days. I remember one guy who came, pulled me aside and said, I'm very pleased with the way you're worshiping me here today. <laughs> that was not, not a, that kind of thing happened really frequent, pretty frequently, you know. <laughs> I also had a question based on, of course, the other observation I had was that often you hear, say, Christian preachers, of which there are many of many denominations, and they're all against sin. But I don't know of anyone else besides Prabhupada who's so completely taken apart the whole Mayavadi construct anywhere. Mm. Yeah. But, but my question is that um, he goes to some length to um, explain the difference between f falsity and, um, and and reality. But would this be a logical argument to say that the idea that the material world is false is itself false since the idea has come from this material world? <laughs> you could say that. I think it's, that's okay, you know. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh... Yeah, that, that, but that, that, that's the Mayavad theory that, uh, that uh, nothing exists, <laughs> not even the Mayavadis. <laughs> I'm false too. <laughs> Someplace tonight you read that the world is not false as the Mayavadis falsely claim. <laughs> No, it's one of Krishna's energies, and and uh, and it, it can be used in Krishna's service. You know, Prabhupada described Krishna consciousness once uh, as the re-spiritualization of matter. So ultimately, everything is spirit. Prabhupada had said that. Uh, a number of times, you know. I, 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 I when he said this, I, I, I may have told you this before, you know. I said you're saying that everything is because everything is Krishna's energy, therefore everything is spirit. And I said to him, you know, I'm trying to understand the difference between matter and spirit, and now you're confusing me because you're thinking everything spirit. And Prabhupada said. And it took me a, a number of days to understand this. Prabhupada said, he said, we are not Mayavadis. 
there are different kinds of spirit. <laughs> That's what he said. So that was it. it took me a while to, to digest that one, but I, I did. And, and that that ties with the idea that of of this this respiritualization of matter. You use everything in Krishna's service; everything regains its original spiritual nature. It should be nice to see, huh? Oh, on the same line, I really appreciated early on in this section where Srila Prabhupada was writing how the Vaishnava sannyas is to utilize things as they're intended to be utilized. Mm -hmm. And then he goes, this part I felt was very encouraging is that even slightly using the body and the material world for the service of the Lord can save one from the gravest danger. Mm -hmm. So that we're slightly, even slightly mm -hmm. using the body and material world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Panchatattva Prabhu, he says, wow, thinking oneself equal to Krishna is evidence of sinful life. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty well smashes the Maya bodies. Yeah. Um, a few more comments here. Sean Murphy says, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glorious to Srila Prabhupada. Wonderful to have you back. Hope the healing is quick and flawless. Thank you for your service. And Adi Devi says, Hari Krishna Gurudev, wish you a very happy new year. So wonderful to see you again. Thank you very much for the reading. And Kluv Pradeep Prabhu says, thank you Gurudev for reading from Krishna book, Hari Krishna. It is great to hear from you again. And one more, Devadharana Devi Dasi says, Hari Krishna Ravina Srup Das, a Krishna conscious new year to you and everyone. Thank I you. pray that you are recuperating nicely. Thank you very much. Yeah. And happy new year to everybody else. Let's see what it turns out. <laughs> anyway, if you're Krishna conscious, it's all happy. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? There is one other thing I was thinking, Gurudev, when you were going through that section and explaining how these uh, terms like uh, horses, eggs, or the horn of a rabbit, they're all Sanskrit uh -huh. terms. Uh -huh. And I was just thinking how, how fun that is. And this is maybe a, a, a comment that's on the edge of silly, but, but sometimes it's, it's, it's fun to go to a thesaurus and see the, uh, the, the list of, of terms that denote nonsense, just, just for <laughs> entertainment, you know? <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's almost as fun as horses' eggs. <laughs> You know, balderdash, poppycock, Tommy rot, all those things. <laughs> and there's the famous BS, <laughs> which is a slander to bulls, but anyway, that's another thing. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. With that million dollar in currency notes analogy, just to go back to that, uh -huh. I was uh, I was actually reflecting that now it's even less than just holding a bunch of papers because it's just a bunch of zeros and numbers yeah, in a computer. That's, that's it's not right, a, you don't yeah. even have a bunch of papers to hold yeah. on to <laughs> or to represent something. I think you can call it virtual wealth. <laughs> Meaning it can disappear anytime. <laughs> Beep. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> but it's weird that those just those digital virtual numbers hold power. I know. Uh -huh. And Tulsi Priya says cryptocurrency is another Crypto, level of the whole yeah, thing. That, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, that's another thing. And, and I also appreciated at the end of just that quick definition of self-realization that Krishna is Krishna is worshipable and that all other living entities are simply his servants. It's a very succinct way of yeah. defining mm -hmm. self-realization it's a great definition of mahima city too he lies down and then millions and trillions of universes come out uh -huh. mahima. okay Kulu Vira Prabhu says, Hare Krishna, Srila Gurudev, happy to hear from you again. 
-hmm. And David Dharana says, thank you so much. This has been very wonderful and enlightening. Hare Krishna. And Tulsi Priya says, thank you, Gurudev. Glad to see you again. Okay, let's see if everything uh, stays up held. <laughs> so many things are going wrong now. Huh? Our world, little world right here, at least in the United States. Huh? I think it's more than just the U.S. Yeah, it's just more than the U.S. Huh? <laughs> it's plague time. All right, we'll pick up again where we left off. Yep. And uh, continuing the prayers with the personified betas. Yes. And we'll uh, we'll notify people about Sunday. We'll see how this wears on you. So okay. right. <laughs> we'll see how you feel about Sunday. And let people know about that. Thank you all so much for joining and special thank you to Jai Dwaita Maharaj, our obeisances to you. Okay. Thank Hare you for Krishna. being here. Shri Krishna Bukha Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna.